Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. Hope you've all been doing well. Since its founding in 2009 by two former Yahoo employees, Brian Acton and Jan Colm, WhatsApp has been one of the principal places to message family and friends across the globe. It enjoys more popularity outside of the United States, with over 2 billion users worldwide, mostly in Latin America, India, Europe, and many African nations. Recently, people have been fleeing from the service after it was announced that a new update will be making the messaging app share data with Facebook. If users don't accept the new terms of the update, they'll no longer be able to use the app. So is it time for WhatsApp users to run for the hills? Is it all over? Let's try and take a balanced look at this. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. In 2014, WhatsApp was bought by Facebook. Facebook has bought the mobile messaging service WhatsApp for $19 billion in cash and stock. At the time, 8 million users fled to the rival app Telegram, and the buyout was called, quote, a 9-11 for the internet by TechCrunch. Despite Facebook's ownership, WhatsApp was still seen as a privacy-focused service. Since 2014, its developers built state-of-the-art end-to-end encryption into the app. They made use of an open-source protocol that could be independently verified. With this latest privacy update, user data can be shared with Facebook and any of its other companies it owns. So what's happening? Those who don't accept the revamped privacy policy by February 8 will no longer be able to use the app. So what data is being shared with Facebook and Instagram? The shared data is, quote, profile name, profile picture, IP address, battery level, signal strength, app version, browser information, mobile network, connection information, phone number, mobile operator, ISP, language, time zone, device operations information, including identifiers unique to Facebook company products associated with the same device or account, end quote. According to WhatsApp, the purpose of this is to, quote, offer integrations across Facebook company products, which also includes Instagram and Messenger. In other words, to target adverts to you. For example, when you share a link of a product, like a new phone you're interested in, or a smart speaker, to a friend or family member in a WhatsApp message, WhatsApp can share that info to other Facebook companies to display targeted ads to you on Instagram or Facebook. The policy also notes that even after deleting the app, some data will remain with the company. The new policy is so aggressive that it doesn't apply in the EU because it violates GDPR laws. It's interesting to note that in 2019 on their company website, WhatsApp stated that privacy was in their DNA. But in 2020, this statement was removed. To many users, it seems like WhatsApp is no longer a privacy-focused product. Signal and Telegram messaging apps are now seeing a sudden increase in demand after the news broke on social media. Signal's popularity shot up even further after it was endorsed by Elon Musk. More than 100,000 users installed Signal on Apple's App Store and the Google Play Store. And in just two days following the news, Telegram picked up 2.2 million downloads. New installs for WhatsApp fell 11% in the first seven days of 2021 compared with the prior week but it should be noted that a singular data point isn't a trend. While some media outlets are claiming that the sky is falling, WhatsApp has actually been sharing user information and metadata with Facebook since 2016. In fact, the European Commission would fine Facebook for being misleading during its 2014 takeover of WhatsApp. Facebook at the time said that it, quote, would be technically impossible to automatically combine user information from Facebook and WhatsApp, end quote. But in 2016, they did just that. Facebook's explanation for the misleading statements in their filing was simply that it was, quote, not intentional. In addition, Facebook also promised to keep WhatsApp as a standalone product, but this promise too was broken. Back in 2016, they offered existing users 30 days to opt out of the data sharing with Facebook. If you chose to opt out at that time, WhatsApp would continue to honour that choice. This opt-out feature has been long gone, and all new users after this time 
automatically had their data shared with Facebook. But according to Wired, the most recent privacy policy changes do not actually impact WhatsApp's existing practices or behavior around data sharing with Facebook. The policy update was simply a clarification on how user data was shared. So the buzz on the internet is mostly an overreaction since this has been going on since 2016. But that being said, the amount of data WhatsApp can collect and share about you, and the fact that it's been consistently sharing this with Facebook, is still concerning. People aren't willing to pay for all content on the internet, and the way that they can pay for it without paying for it with cash is by looking at ads or being subjected to ads. Isn't everybody better off if the ads are targeted to the interests of the individual? That's the, the kind of talking point that is a common refrain. Somebody has to pay for, uh, for content to, to be produced, entertainment or, or information online. Uh, at the same time, we have to think really carefully about um, what it is that we're giving up when we're surrendering our privacy. Anyone who has the technical capacity to can track whatever you do on the internet, combine that with any other data sources that they can acquire about you from um, credit card companies, banks, uh, your cell phone provider, anywhere else. Uh, and just say that you can do whatever you want uh, within that data, with that data, as long as you can make it happen. This uh, digital infrastructure that makes targeted advertising possible, that same infrastructure can be used just as easily to sell sneakers, as you say, uh, as it can to propagate disinformation. Uh, it can be spreading lies about uh, entire ethnic groups and encouraging people to harm them, and that's it's something that's been going on in, in Myanmar, notably via Facebook. The merger of Facebook and WhatsApp was controversial within the WhatsApp company, and it may have contributed to the departure of both WhatsApp's co-founders in late 2017 and 2018 respectively, one of whom went on to work on Signal. Though the new WhatsApp privacy policy doesn't change WhatsApp's behaviour since 2016, it can be a reminder that a lot of the apps that we use for free cost nothing because it's in fact us that are being sold to product advertisers. Fortunately for users, there's some great alternative privacy-focused messaging apps, like Telegram or Signal. So what do you guys think? Are you going to switch to alternatives like Telegram or Signal? Or are you okay with targeted advertising? Feel free to discuss below. So thanks for watching the whole way through this episode. My name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next video. Next time, we'll take a look at the rise and fall of Intel in a two-part video series. Part one should be coming soon. Cheers guys, have a good one.